Hello guys and welcome back to Biscuits Total War. Uh, this time I'm bringing you a 3 vs 3 online commentary battle uh, starring myself, Elite and Jack Frost of the Heaven Clan and we're going to be playing against uh, three other great players. We're playing against a guy called Minor Walker who is in the, the Brotherhood Clan who's known as TR, uh, Zerb, Zerberus and uh, Kim Jong Lee. Now Kim Jong Lee uh, he's actually one of my subs for the, the channel. You might see his uh, comments below. Um, he's not in a clan, but he plays a bit of 31k with us. So it's nice to actually invite him along into this battle so we can actually uh, play alongside each other. So uh, as you can see, uh, what we've actually brought today, I've brought the, the Macedonians, as you can see here. Elite has decided to use a different faction for once. He's actually using the Egyptians, you can see here. And then Jack Frost, he's using the Greeks. So it's quite a, an odd build for us. None of us are using Rome. Uh, we've both got two pipe factions and the Egyptians. So it's going to add a different type of dimension to the battle. Uh, it's going to be slightly different to what we're used to. And it'll probably bring us out of our comfort zone. But hopefully it'll make it an interesting battle and an interesting watch. We're going to be playing up against uh, Carthage. And then two Roman factions. So it's going to be a tricky one, that's for sure. Uh, see if we can try and pull it off. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. So what I'll do quickly, I'll just introduce the actual breakdowns of the army. With my Macedonian forces, I've brought three crescent archers that you can see there. Followed by 11 roll pikes. I've got one as my Peter shield. And then I've got a six companion cav. I've got my six companion cav just hiding in the back there. If we have a look at Elite, now when it comes to the Egyptians, the Egyptians have got pretty weak infantry. They've got decent archers and decent chariots. So that's basically what Elite's done. He's gone for five chariots, one chariot archer, and therefore the rest, um, Pharaoh's guard. So Pharaoh's guard, Pharaoh's bowman. So when it comes to the actual archer duel, we well and truly will win the archer duel. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, my archers plus Elite's archers. And then if we have a look at Jack Frost, again he's brought uh, four archers it looks like, and then four armoured hoplites that he's using in the back there, followed by 12 Spartans. So on the, the infantry, uh, we've got probably less infantry than what they're going to have, but if, regarding the archers, we've got what, four, 18, we've got 21 archers, so that's a huge amount of archers to bring to a fight. So hopefully we can use our archer supremacy as a, an advantage over these guys. So we have a quick look. We've got Minor Walker here, or AKA TR from the Brotherhood Clan. He's brought 14 sacred bands. So he's got a really strong infantry there. One regular slinger. I guess we're just using up some money. Two Balaric slingers, which are maxed out, it looks like, or heavily upgraded. Followed by two armored generals. Now these armor generals are going to be great for soaking up arrow fire and chasing down archers. Uh, let's quickly pause this for two seconds. Have a quick look at Zerb's build. He's brought 15 urbans and 5 Praetorian Cav. And if I have a look at Kim Jong Lee, he's also brought 15 urbans and 5 Cav. So we start off the game. What I've decided to do, I've thrown my archers forward, or two of them forward to try and get some flank shots on either the urbans or these sacred bands. I know if I try and shoot these right near the forwards from the front, I'm not going to do too much damage if they've got these massive shields, but if I can try and get some flank shots, I should be able to do quite a bit of damage. So I've thrown them forward. Zerb's then retaliated by throwing forward his cav to try and probably ch chase away my archers. If we look on this flank here, uh, Elite is swinging one of his chariot archers around the flank here. And Jack Frost is probably going to come down the centre here with his pikes. So the opposition now, they've got themselves into a decent formation. Both Kim Jong Lee and Zerberus have come to the centre. And it looks like TR is just right in the back there to act as defence at the end of the day. My archers, they're not firing at the moment because there's no. I can fire, but it would basically be a waste of arrows. I want to try and get them to a better formation or better distance before I start firing. 
And if you have a look at this flank over here, you can see Elite and Jack Frost, they're getting their archers around here. Again, we're just going to try and shoot the flanks of the, the opposition. Hopefully we can get them to play quite static. If they can play static, then that will mean that we'll have that archer supremacy and we can basically capitalize on our archers that we've got to try and shoot the, the cav or take out the odd unit. So I'm moving my guys forward now. I move my actual the brunt force of my infantry. And if we have a look, Jack Frost is doing exactly the same on his wing. He's moving his guys forward. So I'm going to come in from this side. And Jack Frost is going to come in from this side, it looks like. It's almost like the the Zulu tactic of the bull ring, uh, the bull horns. But unfortunately, we've got a, a pretty sloppy centre, just full of archers. So no uh, heavy infantry in the centre. So Zerberus has seen what I've done. He's now going to peel off his infantry to attack mine. Now what my plan was, if I can try and get Zerberus to try and attack my guys, hopefully it's going to leave his flank vulnerable, so that Elite can shoot the flanks of his guys. So I'm going to move my guys again probably in a moment. And now Kim Jong-li is going to rush his guys forward, it looks like he's going to try and aggressively attack the Greeks and push them away. So in comes uh, Zerb, he's now uh, charging forward. I've tried to cut him off. I'm just gonna try and hold his guys now with my pikes. Now I'm gonna take a lot of damage with the peeler, as you can see. Uh, he's gonna just be launching volley after volley of peeler into my guys. And some of my guys are down to 89, down to 100, down to, 100, ooh, down to 90, 89, taking a lot of damage. He's now peeling his guys back, and as he's peeling his guys back, I'm now going to shoot the backs with my archers there. Now it looks like, if you look at this fight here, Jack Frost is now heavily engaged into King Jong Ling, and Jack Frost is getting surrounded by the uh, the Romans. So what I do, I see this going on in the background. I'm going to push forward with my infantry, but when I do get the opportunity, I'm going to get all of my cav and just charge them all down here just to help out uh, Jack Frost, my ally. But what I don't want to do is run them too quickly because I don't want my archers being vulnerable. So I'm pushing forward, pushing forward to my guys. As I'm pushing forward, I'm shooting the backs of these urbans. And now TR is bringing, or Minor Walker is bringing in his Carthage army. So now that I've seen that, what I want to do is try and get out of there because I'm not going to be able to take on both of these armies with my pikes. So I'm going to run my guys back and as I'm running my guys back I've got my cav and I'm launching them right across the battlefield to help out with um, Jack Frost. I'm aiming for his general unit here because if I can get that unit routed that will mean that we'll lower the morale for all of the Julii forces. And hopefully if I charge in here if Kim Jong Lee does actually do a counter charge with his cav, the pikes will be able to skewer his uh, cav there. So in comes his cav. He's charging in. In comes my cav. We've managed to really take out his general there, so it's going to cause panic in the Julii forces, lower the morale, and that causes a chain route. Now in comes uh, Kim Jong Lee with his cav trying to do a counter charge in the back of my guys. I'm going to turn my guys around, put them into the alt attack to get their sword out, he says. Um, now I've got that alt attack going on, plus the surround, and Elite has thrown in his chariot. We've now caused a mass panic, and that basically knocks out all of the Julii Cav. So, in the meantime, my guys are running from here all the way down here. I've been chased by uh, Carthage, I've been chased by Zerb. It's still 50-50 at the moment. If we look at the infantry, they've still got all these sacred bands, they've still got all of these urbans. I've now got depleted Royal Pikemen and we've got depleted uh, some Spartans. But we do have now the Cav Supremacy um, because we've got the Companion Cav and we've got the Chariots. If you look at the opposition, they've only really got um, 
Zerberus's cav. And Zerberus's cav at the moment are just basically frantically running around trying to take out as many of these um, Pharaoh's bowmen as possible. So I've put my guys there and I've again trying to block up Zerberus's forces. And as I'm blocking up his forces, I'm now going to go in for counter charge with my companion cav. Zebra sees that and peels off his guys to attack my companion cav. But because they're out of formation and I've got a decent cav charge, plus these guys are heavily upgraded, I've managed to smack into the sides of these guys and route the whole of the, the SPQR army. I now pull my cav back out because I can see um, the sacred bands have now got into the, the action. And what I don't want to do is get my guys impaled on these sacred bands. So it looks like now Zerberus has pretty much lost all of his infantry. Uh, they are still in high numbers of 50, 70 um, and they will probably come back. So what we want to do is try and chase them down, make sure that they don't come back. In the meantime, uh, it's now basically myself and Jack Frost versus uh, the Carthaginians. So I'm going to get my guys into a formation on the flank here. And it looks like Jack Frost is just going to engage straight forward. And then the rear here, you can see myself and Elite, we're using our cab just to chase down these units. In the meantime, Zerberus has got his cab and he's just chasing down all of these archers, trying to get as many of the routing ones as possible and try to shoo them off. Because these um, infantry, they should be able to beat the, the Greeks, they should be able to beat the um, Royal Pikemen. But we have got overwhelming numbers, so hopefully we can use the, the numbers on our side to take them out. Um, and also Zerberus is using his cab just to basically mop up these arches here. By mopping up these arches, it's going to mean that these sacred bands are going to be uh, safe from archer fire. So we've mopped up a few of these routing urbans. And now I'm going to pull back my cab and just try and impale the back of these sacred bands. My guys are tired. Um, and if we have a look at these sacred bands, they're still warmed up. So you can see they're still standing there. They've only just started to rout. And that's after we've had all of these chariots and all of these cabs smack into the back. So one of the units are routed. The other ones are still hanging in there. With the morale for the sacred bands, they're really strong. It's a really good infantry unit. Especially if we managed to get some upgrades on them. Um, he's now peeled off his general units just to try and help out. One thing that's interesting when you see the, the chariots being used, the chariots are really hard to actually control. Uh, so literally if you send them in near the pikes, often they will get snagged up. Uh, it's almost like they're learner drivers and they're pretty poor. As you can see this chariot unit is just going to chase right into the side here. Try and kill the backs of these guys. He turns around and he'll probably just drive straight into the front of a pike unit in a second. Again, I've got my cav here and I've tried to charge them in. Again, doing a hammer and anvil just to try and route these units here. It's hard going as the morale for these units are really strong. Plus, my uh, cav is now really depleted. They're very tired, so not going to be very effective. A few of the units, though, have started to route. My guys have now managed to peel around the back of these sacred bands. And it's just been a case of trying to mop them up and try and push them that. Um, squash them between these Spartans and my Royal Pikemen. Um, so it looks like the Carthaginians are pretty much finished for at the moment. Just going to double speed it for a few moments. So as you can see, we're just basically trying to surround and take out these last few units. There's a few units that have come back from routing, as you can see. So they're finally routed. My guys here, my cab, is going to try and chase down these units so they don't come back. I'm going to turn my pikes around. Again, it's just trying to mop up these units here. Those units are routed. Zebra still has one of his cav units left, which is probably going to use to try and do a hammer and anvil, which he does. He managed to route a few of my roll pikes, uh, but then he gets snagged up on all of the rest of the pikes, and then his unit starts to route. So uh, I'm now going to turn my guys around and go for these units here. And just basically uh, route them and try and chase them off the battlefield. Whilst this is going on, Jack Frost is trying to route these final units. I put it onto a triple speed for a few moments. So I charge my guys in here. It's just going to be a case of time before these units start to route. So they've now routed, and those ones 
Uh, one last Carthaginian unit comes back. And whilst this unit comes back, there's a slinger now just throwing some rocks into the back of my guys. Managed to rout the uh, last one of Zebras' units, and then eventually the Carthaginians they throw in a towel. So it was a really it was pretty close battle to be honest. Uh, they did have the infantry edge at the end of the day, but we had the arch edge, and we were able to uh, outmaneuver them in some ways. And that both a uh, Zerberus and Minor Threat both went for myself, which gave me time to use my cav to help Heaven Jack to uh, take out Kim John Lee. And then with that decent charge that we got onto Zerberus, he managed to rouse a lot of his infantry, and therefore it was just a moment of time before we actually wrapped up the game. But if you look at the kills, uh, the kills, you know, everyone's done really well. If you look at my kills, I've got 1600 kills. Uh, Elite got in just over 1,100 kills. Uh, Heaven Jack got in 1,400 kills. Zerberus again, 1,600 kills. Uh, Minor Walker got in about 1,600 kills as well. So regarding the kills, you know, it was really even. Unfortunately, Kim Jong Lee only got in about 500 kills, and that's basically as he got snagged up on their uh, Jack's pikes, and then he got. Um, a uh, massive hammer and anvil attack on him by myself with my cav which basically routed the majority of his infantry units but it was a really close game there uh, really enjoyable it's always nice to see different factions nice to see the egyptians being used um, and nice to see so many pike factions being used so i hope you guys enjoy that uh, please let me know what you think of the battle uh, please leave a little like uh, please leave a little comment and if you haven't already subbed please uh, sub and uh, I'll put a little link to Lite's channel so you can check that out. Uh, if you have any queries, questions, anything at all about the, the battle, please just let me know and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So this is uh, Biscuit signing out, uh, wishing you all the best and thanks so much for checking out my channel. Thanks so much for your time and uh, please do check out my other videos if you get a few moments. All the best, catch you guys soon. Bye now.